What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is your boy at Big Game James underscore 36 with Greg McGarity, and this is the Tax Slayer Gator Bowl Drive to Selection brought to you by Toyota. I'm gonna have a good, I'm gonna have a good time. Hopefully, I'm gonna get better saying that each week. <laughs> but what we're gonna do is each week we're gonna come to you, we're gonna give you some ideas of how bowl selection happens, what's it like to be um, a, a scout. We're gonna learn the history of the Gator Bowl as well as kind of make some predictions of what we think the college football playoff is going to be, as well as what we think um, the Gator Bowl will be as um, we progress with more information. So mm -hmm. right now, this is the week zero show. We have no information. We're basically <laughs> going off of um, um, what we know. And what I would like to know, and I think a lot of people want to know, what is the Gator Bowl? Um, what, do, what does it do? Is it just a game um, to kick off the new year or to end the, to end the current year? Uh, what, all in, what all encapsulates the Gator Bowl? Yeah, well, that's what we're probably known best for is the Gator Bowls. This will be the 79th annual Gator Bowl. So we've been at it for a long time, and it's, it's been that way for so many years in Jacksonville. People have come to expect you know, a great game. And uh, we obviously had a great game last year, and we expect to have a, another game this year, another great game this year. But we're probably getting better known for our work in the community outside of the football game. And so we are very proud of our association with probably six or seven charities in town that create better opportunities for young people, uh, middle, middle school youth, into helping them with job searching, uh, having them help them plan for the future, even down to the uh, Dream Team, which are 12 incredible young people that we're helping create valuable experiences and also helping teachers in the community. So. We're multifaceted, but we're really known for the game, and that creates the most excitement. But we have a lot of things to be excited for throughout the year. So the game has a trickle-down effect. So the game brings people here into Jacksonville, whether it be teams or whether it be um, you know local businesses right. and things of that right. nature. And then from there, the Gator Bowl and the Gator Bowl charities help to enrich um, the community. So it's a thing that just has not only a economic impact, but it also has a development, a developmental impact for the youth. There's no question about that. The better we do, the more we're able to do for others. So it's critical that we draw great crowds. It's critical that we maintain our relationship with the ACC and the SEC, two great brands. And so it is a trickle-down effect, but we're very proud of, of what we do because we're a nonprofit and we're not in it to make money. I mean, we'd love to, we want to be in the black every year, but we certainly want to be able to, to reinvest the, the revenue that we do generate back into the community. Well, that brings me to my next question. How does the Gator Bowl pick the teams in which they do? So I know you mentioned the ACC and the SEC. Um, what goes into the Gator Bowl selection and what is some of the criteria to meet the Gator Bowl? We have to win at least six games to begin with and preferably seven at our bowl level. Uh, but we have a three-year agreement, three years left on our agreement with the ACC and the SEC. And there are certain picks, it's very complicated on how the picks occur. And usually it takes a combination of, a, of us expressing our desire to the conferences on who we'd like. The athletic directors at the, at the schools also tell the conference where they'd like to go. And then at the end of the day, the conferences decide these are the best matchups. So we're all able to add our own opinion, but the final analysis comes down to the SEC saying, we're gonna make team A available, and the ACC will say, we'll make this team available to you. So those two come together, and hopefully you have a matchup like we had last year with Notre Dame and South Carolina. Uh, so that's, that's how it works, but we, we aren't solely the, the, the deciding factor. A lot of things go into it, but certainly, we make our desires known. So that's a great question. So with Notre Dame having a very interesting relationship mm -hmm. um, in college, fo right. college football, their ACC, a full voting member of the ACC <laughs> at that, but they're not in the ACC mm -hmm. for football, they remain independent. How, do, how does Notre Dame get selected? And um, like, I, I got South Carolina, but how do you select a Notre Dame? Well, they're in a pool just like the other schools. It, it, was, it would be like they're a full-time member of the ACC. So even though they don't play in the championship game or not eligible for that, they're in that pool. So last year they were in a pool with North Carolina and I think North Carolina State. And so there were three bowls involved in that. It was us, San Diego, and uh, Orlando. So Orlando had the first pick and they picked FSU. 
second pick, we had the second pick, so we took Notre Dame, which left North Carolina going out to the West Coast. So uh, things just dropped our way, and Notre Dame was just, just like they would be, as is South Carolina in the SEC. So that's how it broke down, and things broke our way last year. And that was a great game. Um, what are some of the things that the teams get a chance to do and experience um, when they come to Jacksonville? Well, one of the great things about our game is that the, uh, the good Lord has blessed us with great natural resources. So once they land at, at Jacksonville Airport, one team travels to Amelia Island and stays at the Omni. Other team goes to the Marriott Sawgrass. So they're in world-class hotels. Uh, but they, they, these young men and their uh, families and the coaches, they, they like to really relax. And so you can certainly do that here in uh, North Florida. Uh, but we also take the teams up to Mayport. They get to tour a, a ship that's in port, learn a little bit about what it's like to be in the Navy, and learn a little bit about what life is and what life would be living on a ship. And then we take them out the next day to uh, Top Golf, and so they have about a two-hour period where we feed them, and they're able to get out there, all the all the players out there, and so it's kind of funny to watch them enjoy themselves. And it's a little downtime, but. We don't try to overschedule because these young men, they enjoy just their camaraderie with each other. They like to just chill. They like to sleep. Mm -hmm. They like to eat. They like to have a practice in the morning. And they just like to relax. That's what I remember about bowl games. I used to joke with people say, well, I'm a little bit bigger than that now. But I used to tell them I didn't get 250 by fasting. <laughs> <laughs> I got like, we, you like to eat, you like to sleep, yeah. you like to go and have a good time yeah. um, with your teammates. It's almost like a, a bowl game is a vacation that you earned by winning enough games. And, you know, there's other cool things that you, we used to get. Not players can get paid, but right. we didn't right. get paid then. Right. Our payment was making it to a really, really good bowl to get right. those stipends. But yeah. um, also staying at a, a world-class resort like I we, we definitely didn't stay at the Omni I'm a I am a um, what do you call it, alumni right. of the Gator Bowl we didn't stay at the Omni but you guys I don't know if the Gator Bowl had anything to do with the ACC championship okay. but I did stay at the Sawgrass okay. for the ACC right. championship right. so those facilities right. are are nice and also having the beach not that far um, definitely goes into it but if I remember correctly Notre Dame got a chance to get involved with the the charitable aspect of what you guys had as well uh, can you kind of go into detail sure. about that well we asked both schools to kind of participate in a uh, uh, pre-practice session maybe with their third or fourth stringers or scout teamers to where they could come out there and just embrace youth football and so Notre Dame uh, accepted that opportunity and so at Fernandina Beach High School they welcomed probably a hundred young people they got to interact and kind of go through some drills and no contact obviously mm -hmm. but they got to be in that environment they got to watch the practice and usually the practices are open <clears throat> and so for the uh, the young people that got to experience hanging out with some Notre Dame football players that's a huge deal so we're very grateful for uh, for coach for making time to do that but that's just another way that we can impact young people because I'm sure there might have been a youngster there that might now become a huge fan of college football but also of Notre Dame as well yeah that's and that's one of the big what better way to help your recruiting by giving back and sure. being in one of the pipeline states right. for college football yeah. um, your experience you're a, a former athletic director mm -hmm. And you, at, at one school, I won't mention, but at another school <laughs> that, that I'm going to say you laid the foundation okay. to let that school become <laughs> what they are now um, in the Georgia Bulldogs. Have you as an, been on the side of the athletic director and how, what kind of what goes into planning to bring your team to um, a bowl game? Well, I'm fortunate to have been involved in all aspects of bowl travel from sitting in the chairs the, as the AD as well as someone that's working with a team to prepare everything for the bowl, be the advanced team. So it's a pretty compressed schedule. Uh, you're going to be at the bowl site four or five days, but you find out where you're going, you know, the first Sunday in December. So you've got to extend invitations. You've got the team. You've got the coaches. You've got the support staff. You've got the president's group. Uh, and you've got to find a way whether you can either go by bus or you meet Everybody meets down there in their own means of transportation or you charter. So a lot of decisions have to be made very quickly. So uh, it's, a, it's a 
the adrenaline gets pumping because you're so excited to be there. But you've got to do a lot of detail work because when you land, when that, when that, when you assemble everybody here that first day, you better have your act together or you won't be in that position very long. So coordination, communication, and the ability to, to coordinate with hotels and bus drivers and practice sites, it all has to work very efficiently or I'm sure they'll find somebody else to, to do that job. So we kind of talked about it a little bit. Obviously, the criteria, um, mm -hmm. preferably, you got to win at least six, preferably seven or eight. ACC, SEC, get the, um, with Notre Dame um, involved, get the first um, choice. Um, what are some, some disqualifiers to come to the bowl game, even if you meet that criteria? Well, we know this year that South Carolina and Notre Dame would not be eligible to play as per the conference agreements. Uh, they never like to have a team going to a, the same bowl unless it's one of the, the final four games, uh, college football playoff games. But they never like for them to go back to back. And really, they don't like to go uh, two, year, two, two times in a, uh, in a three year period. Right. So in essence, that might eliminate Wake Forest for coming because they were here two years ago. But stranger things have happened. Uh, but those would be the disqualifiers there as far as repeat performances uh, that come into play. Or uh, you want to avoid matchups during the season or matchups that could even happen next year. For instance, South Carolina plays North Carolina in the season opener this year. So you didn't want to avoid that game, so the first two games, uh, the last two games that South Carolina would play would be against mm -hmm. North Carolina here and then North Carolina and Charlotte for the first game of, of the 23 season. So a lot of things come into play, but those are the main uh, disqualifications. So outside of them probably not making the bowl, we would never see a rematch of, um, of the Sunshine State Showdown. I think that's the, the official name of it, but Florida State, Florida. Absolutely. We won't see Thanksgiving nope. and then turn right nope. back around to nope. see it a month later. Won't see that. Oh, man. So, um, <laughs> well, with that being said, one of the things that we want to do each week, we're going to try to see from your expertise how will, wh where do you see the playoffs going? Now, obviously, this is week zero. Right. We can only go based off of past performance. Right. Um, to try to predict the future right. behaviors, which never really work, uh, right. work as seamless as people think. But based upon what you feel, who do you see in the um, college football playoff? Well, I think the four teams that you would think right off the bat are going to be Alabama and Georgia from the SEC and Ohio State and Michigan from the Big Ten. Uh, I think Southern Cal from the Pac-10, uh, Pac-12, is, is going to be a player. Will somebody emerge from the ACC like – Clemson or FSU. Uh, I think the Big 12, can Texas or Oklahoma, who knows, TCU came out of the, out of the Big 12 unbeknownst to anyone. So I think there's uh, always the chance that maybe that fourth team in the playoff is going to be someone that we're not counting on right now. TCU certainly want, was not on anyone's list to advance to the Final Four last year. So who knows, I think we'll just see uh, you have some great matchups throughout the year. There's never been a team with two losses advanced to the Final Four. So that puts a lot of pressure on some teams in the very beginning of the season. You don't want to lose that first game. Mm -hmm. You certainly don't want to lose the second game because it'd be extreme. Well, you'd be setting precedent to be able to advance to the Final Four. You can still get in the New Year's Day Bowl, but to advance to that Final Four, they're just very small margins of error there. Yeah, I mean, and not just TCU this year, um, going back to what you're saying, Cincinnati mm -hmm. um, the year before. So uh, that fourth team kind of is a wild card. And for people to not think it's as much parity, there kind of has been a little bit of parity. Um, it's nothing's ever perfect. That's why they'll expand it. But we'll talk about sure. expansion and a lot of the other drama that's going on in college football that makes it more interesting. But um, you, you talked about a two game, um, losing two games. And basically, I know my alma mater, I played at Florida State. Yeah. We got a two game season early. <laughs> so, early. like, right. in, in that FSU LSU game, you lose that. Now you got Clemson at the end of the month. You can't go, you, you go starting off 0 2 puts you in a, in a bad spot. But straight, like, again, they could go 2 0. They can go, excuse me, maybe 4 0 in September. They could be 2 and 2. They could be 3 and 1. Those are some really, really good teams in there. So um, we've got some information here yep. um, based on predictions. And that kind of helps us kick off 
who we believe or who we would like to see. Because again, week zero, we don't have any information. Right. Um, the CBS has the University of Miami versus Ole Miss. Um, Athlon has um, was it? Yeah, UNC versus Ole Miss. 247 has Clemson versus Ole Miss. Um, College Football News, Clemson versus Ole Miss. College Football Network, Wake Forest versus Arkansas. Brett McMurphy, Louisville versus Auburn. Based on the information that you've given us, because again, I think education mm -hmm. is the most important thing, because all of us want to be our own insider and our own analyst. Right. So one of my goals in this is to teach people how to win college football yeah. bowl pick -em. Right. So we obviously know College Football Network doesn't really know what they're talking about yeah, right I now. I wouldn't pay much attention yeah. to their bowl predictions. Yeah. <laughs> and some people, you know, granted, that will get the clicks, but sometimes, right. but again, as we talked about, it's wins mm -hmm. as well as proximity is what you want as well but we need to know if they've played in the bowl game so exactly. that will help us win. and that's pretty much across the board outside of the new year six um bowl games so now Ole miss would probably be a really good really good time lane kiffin um lane kiffin is an awesome coach also exciting that would be an exciting game because he plays an exciting brand of offense but um what other? What about some of these other matchups? Do you find that might be intriguing based upon these predictions? Well, I, I think that uh, Ole Miss. You mentioned Lane Kiffin. They've got to go through the SEC West, which we know is a meat grinder. It's extremely difficult on that side, on both sides this year. Uh, North Carolina, Clemson. You know, you get back to North Carolina in that first game against South Carolina. Obviously, South Carolina can't come here this year. But like you mentioned, Clemson's got got that game against uh, FSU at home this year. That's a huge game for them. Uh, but also that, you know, Louisville is on the upswing with Jeff Brom. I mean, Auburn has a new coach this year. Arkansas is in the Sam Pittman era, and everybody's so excited about the job that Sam's done. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, you've got some dynamics there that are at work. Miami's got a tough road to hoe. North Carolina with, with uh, May at quarterback is always going to be a threat. So. That's the exciting part about it. We're going to be able to update that. That's why it's updated preseason. So after week zero, probably not much movement. After week one and week two, you'll see a lot of movement. You'll see a lot of movement in that area. But I don't think the keys for us, you know, Wake Forest would be a reach because they were here two years ago. And obviously South Carolina and Notre Dame, they're, pro they're not in our mix right now. So. Anyone that has those three teams playing in our bowl as far as the projections, I don't know if I'd pay much uh, attention to that. All right. Well, either way, it's, one, it's a great bowl. It's actually grown. We've seen um, people like like it more. It's, um, obviously, last year's game was, uh, was, was epic. Right. It was a very good matchup um, between two teams. And, but more importantly, it's a lot of young professionals right. and colleges and people in general's first time being able to experience another city and I think that's what we're going to learn about what more the city of Jacksonville has to offer again as an alumni over 20 something years ago my first time ever coming to the city of Jacksonville was through the Gator Bowl now a lot better I can't wait to see some of the activities but it was also fun so appreciate your time this is the tax layer Gator Bowl drive to selection presented by Toyota I'm James Coleman this is Greg McGarity we will see you guys next time